like that's a feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a tattoo shop. Supposed to have the sound of tattoo machines. It would be weird if you right. didn't. Yeah. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah. What is happening? My name is Chris. And I'm Paul. And welcome back to this week's episode, or another episode, this week's another, another, another episode of whatever you want to call it. Welcome to this week's, this episode, That Tattoo Show. Off to a good start as <laughs> usual. Do you know what? I just felt weird. I was like, because we're doing it weekly now, it's like, welcome to this week's episode. But then I thought like, you might not watch it this week, you might watch it next week. Uh, I mean, it's like, so do we do it this week? Can I just remind you of something, Chris? We've been doing this weekly for the last 52 weeks. I know that, but you know. <laughs> it's like, why would it suddenly come as a surprise to you? I know, it's not coming as a surprise. I'm just thinking like, what if we decide to do it fortnightly? Which we won't, but I'm just saying. I know, I just felt weird saying weekly. Welcome to this week's weekly episode of That Tattoo Show. Here's the weekly intro that you watch every week. So I've got some news for you before we start. This is just news for Paul. Welcome back from the Welcome intro. Back. I know you've only been gone for a minute or so, but it's not got any better in the minute you've, yeah. been, uh, you've not been here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification buttons and, and all that good stuff to keep up to date with this. But yeah. Right, click it. It's a brand new graphic that I made just for the show. Give it, give it a click. And I, I thought maybe sixty-nine percent of you weren't clicking it because maybe you just don't like the graphic. So, I've, so we've I've changed, changed it. The, the I like animation it actually. Just to see if I can attract you a little bit more. Click the button. Do you know what I tried today? What? A vegan, right? Ham and cheese baguette from Greg's. Ham and cheese vegan. Yeah, they've got vegan. See, I'd pro- I, I saw it. Work. I've tried vegan cheese and I haven't found one that I. This was not bad. I'd be like honest with you. Cheese tasting like it wasn't bad. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad. I was like, all right, I can eat that. I tell you what, I did have today that was so good. I stopped eating it because I sw- I, I genuinely believed that I'd, I'd, Karen had given me a chicken sub. <laughs> was the not chicken sub from Subway? The texture of it and everything. I genuinely thought. I actually stopped and went, Is, man, that's. That's chicken. Like I got about got like two bites in, and I was like, "Karen, you got to try this. This is crazy. Are you sure this is chicken? It isn't chicken?" She's like, "No, it definitely isn't." It, that <laughs> she's like, "Oh, it's definitely not chicken." And she turned around. She's like, "Ah, it's fucking chicken." <laughs> He's got no idea. Vegan. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not allergic to chicken. I'm just allergic to milk and stuff like that. So that's what that's the main reason why I avoid. So yeah, I tried that. They've got another one out though, Greg's have. They've got a oh, sausage. Cheesy and... beans. Oh, I know. Beans are vegan anyway. They're fucking beans. Cheesy beans and sausage in a like a pasty. I feel sorry for you if you're in America because you ain't got Greg's. You know, it's bad, isn't it? They should, Greg's could, should get out to the US. Fuck Starbucks on the home turf. <laughs> Fuck Starbucks. Fuck Coca Cola. You want Greg's. But I will tell you now if you're in America and you start seeing Greg's start popping up, that does mean we're about to recolonise your country, so you want to stop that because once once Greg's are there, that's it. Oh, we'll you'll be fucked. there. <laughs> we will all be there. <laughs> Speaking of colonisation, right? Fucking you, the viewers, but what the 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 Bishop of Cambridge or some shit like that? The Bishop of York. Do you know what that fucker have said? No. He reckons right that Welsh people and especially at like Welsh rugby games and shit like that, we should sing "God Save the Queen." I just want to say something right now, fucking York man. Off you fuck. Hasn't Wales got its own national anthem? Yeah, like. yeah, we've got our own national anthem. We are a country with our own language. You're not a county. Has yeah. he just read the word country and thought, oh, it's the county of Wales? Why are they singing their own song? It's like a whole separate country with a flag and everything. Yeah. And of course you got a national anthem. Couldn't recall it off the top of my head, but I'm, I, I would have just presumed, well, of course the Welsh team sing the Welsh national anthem. They're Welsh. We have, our own, yeah. I think I think it's that it, it is down to like the, the last of the British Empire trying to finally fully fucking conquer this country. Like, I mean, I, I think they probably should have given up on that a long, long time ago. Yeah. I think it's very clear, speaking to most Welsh people, that there is absolutely zero interest. <laughs> fucking zero. But you see, here's one. In all seriousness, this is the one that I don't understand. Right? Is we've just left Europe under you know like recently we've left europe and they're talking about you know we've got to leave the grips of this you know this socialist experiment and we've got to have and they won't let us do it and we can't have 
Yeah, well, exactly. How can you stand there and go, we, we can't have Brussels running the show for us, we've got to have control of this, and then turn around to the Scottish government and the Welsh government and go, but you can't. I mean, surely the argument is exactly the same. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not much into politics, but I just think the whole thing's a little bit mad that you yeah. leave Europe and have all these arguments and then turn around and go, well, you can't have a referendum. I'm like, why not? Exactly. Like, we think we could do better. We've had a vote. That's that. You know what I mean? Job it's, done. It, 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 I mean, it's great, it's great news for my kids if that happens, because if Scotland votes, have one of these votes and, and decide that they're going to, you know, become an independent country, both my kids will have dual citizenship. And if Scotland yeah. join Europe, then my kids will have European passports as well as English ones. And I'm like, perfect. And so will my wife. So they'll all be able to go on holiday and I won't. <laughs> no, you'll be able to get one because you might. Yeah, possibly, yeah. So that's it. You know. Politics and nonsense. We aside, digress. Right? Sorry. I wanted to tell Paul something. I found I found something. I'm working out a price for it. I might have sourced this, right? Someone who can make that tattoo show neon signs. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be very nice. Yeah. Fuck knows how much it's going to cost, but we find out. Well, I think these days they don't make them out of neon. There's a few places that do them traditionally. Oh, no, this is going to be like made out of like fucking rubber and LEDs. Like, doing. What have you been up to this week then? Tattooing? My birthday, actually. I thought my birthday was today, but then there was like. Oh, you had a couple of birthday wishes on there, didn't you? On the, in the old comments. I don't know why. Thank you, by the way. But I don't know why. I genuinely thought my birthday was today. And then I booked a really cool tattooing for my birthday. I can't wait to share it with you. Booked it in and looked at my diary like that. I was like, fuck, I got it in tomorrow. I was like, oh shit, my birthday. So this was Tuesday. I was like, oh, my birthday's tomorrow, which was Wednesday. So I had to chill, work, done a cool tattoo, ate some food, contemplating buying a 65 inch TV. I've just bought a 60 for the shop. No, I'm just for the, mm. you know, because like since we did the uh, refit, you know, I said to the guys, what, what we'll do is we'll blank the room for COVID, and then as we come out of COVID, we'll put back in the stuff that we miss. So weirdly, I wasn't never expecting them to um, to say this. Was they, they were like, oh, can you put some guitars back on the walls? Mm. And then I was like, yeah, sure. So I hung a couple of guitars back up, and then everybody missed the TV. So we have, a, we have a TV now. It's nice for the clients sometimes to be able to just chuck a couple of movies on and then they chill out, don't we've they? We've got three, we, each one of us, we've got obviously in our studio, we've got our own rooms and each one of us has got a TV and our clients love it. Some clients will only watch a certain series in, in, in the studio. Yeah, yeah, we have a bit of that. Yeah. Great. I tell you, we had an interesting one today though. If any of you have got a laser, right, and you want to get rid of it, fuck me. I did not expect, right, the clinical waste company to go, yeah, we can get rid of that for you. 350 fucking quid. It's not even my laser. Can't you just take it to the tip? No. And just chuck it in a skip? No, because guess what? It's hazardous waste. Hazardous waste. Oh, okay. Mm. And speaking of hazardous waste, we got a little bit of a correction to do. Not really a correction, but when somebody was editing, I think last week's show was so much information in there that Paul left something out. Um, if you have watched it all, I briefly mentioned something called PBAT. Yeah. Um, and earlier on in that episode, right, I mentioned that the PLA, right, is sustainable, right? And, the, yeah. and I said, remember that. It's renewable and sustainable and remember that. Oh, right. And the reason why I said remember it is because there is a way, right? And this is a bit that uh, Paul left out, unfortunately. Let me choke it's Because I, I didn't have his show notes because he, he writes them down using a, a, a Victorian stick. Yeah. With, um, with like, like graphite in between. I don't, like, like, he doesn't type them into his laptop and they're not available. But it turns out you can't email... Uh, things written on. I write them down in my Marvel. In my, I I, I write them down in my Marvel book. Like. Yeah, see that's that's like n like from the nineteenth century. I'm just like airdrop me your show notes. I just like. I just like writing them down sometimes. So basically, in a nutshell, when it comes to the uh, the, the the compost and things like that, there is a way that you can biodegrade this bioplastic, right? That's not in an industrial composting facility. It still has to be composted, and you can't do that because it's clinical waste, right? But it means that it's got a better chance of breaking down in a landfill site. But obviously, after watching that episode, if you have watched it, if you haven't, go and watch it. You'll understand that things in landfill probably gonna last there for fucking ever anyway. Uh, so basically, if you add a polymer called PBAT, right, which is 
polybutylene adipate terephthalate, something like that. I'm hoping I'm saying it right. I'm probably saying it wrong. If you add that to PLA, which is polylactic acid, that will then allow it to decompose or compost in a non-industrial facility. The problem is though with that, it means it's no longer sustainable and it's no longer renewable because it is a fossil fuel based polymer, uh, which means it's uh, a byproduct of crude oil. So again, sorry, another reason why a lot of these products that are eco-friendly aren't actually eco-friendly. Well, obviously, this episode hasn't come out yet, uh, so we don't know what you've said about it, but I'm just going to weigh in with that, because I watched, you know, and obviously we made the show, and then I watched it back while I was editing it, and like, I thought it when we filmed it, but I thought it even more when, we, uh, when I was <clears> editing <throat> it. Yeah. And I just, it's, to me, it seems like a completely pointless thing to have. Yeah. Uh, PLA. I'm like, uh, for the for the small amount of uh, plastic that your, you know, your little ink caps take up, uh, you'd be far better off trying to, you know, look in other areas of your life, I think, to reduce your carbon footprint. Because I, I, I think you're being sold, to me, this is my opinion, I think all of that, you're being sold the dummy. You'd be much better off finding other ways of reducing your footprint and not worrying about it. 100%. Like, do you know, know what it seems to me like it's a fucking waste of time, to be honest. Just... Total waste. Totally, time to totally agree. Like, when you think about it, right, the actual amount of plastic waste we produce as a tattooist, it's not that much. When you look at it, it's a couple of ink caps. Yeah, you've got, no, if you're using the foaming wash bottles, then yeah, you are. But, like, there are things like the Hustle Butter tubs or the uh, Dermalize tubs or the Mambo Glide tubs and things like that. They're plastic, so clean them out, take them home, put them in your recycling. You know, you could do that. Those are the things that you can recycle. And those are the things that should be kind of like pushed as eco-friendly and recyclable, not stuff that not not stuff that is going to be contaminated uh, and classed as clinical waste. Like. So, yeah. Here's an idea. If you own a clinical waste company, don't you think it would be better if clinical, or it's a good idea that if clinical waste companies started saying, as well as your yellow bag, we have a yellow bag in the UK for clinical waste. And orange. Oh, do you get orange as well? I think, I think orange and yellow... Waste company. Sorry to interrupt you again. I think orange, I'm sure, right, orange and yellow dictate what they do. Like, say, for example, one colour is incinerated, the other colour is landfill. I think. I could right. be wrong, okay. but I think. I think that's like... Well, I just think it'd be good if, these, if a clinical waste company offered... Like, I don't know, a blue bag service where you where you basically, all the stuff you're on about, like your, your leftover tubs when you finish with them and you swill them out, you throw them all in a blue bag because they don't um, recycle business waste, right? Well, if because we're paying to have our waste taken away, if they had like a recycling service so that you could bag everything up in... You know, um, you know, put all your plastics in a in a bag there, and they could take that and recycle it for you. Then I'd pay to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. If my clinical waste company took it away, I just think it's a service that they don't currently offer, or not that I'm aware of, and they they could offer it, right? Yeah. Well, I I know that like the, the some of the companies like our new our new waste management company, they take our waste and it is burnt for energy. So I think certain things that can be recycled are taken out of it to to get recycled, but just generally it's like. It, that, that's what it is. So. But I think it would be good if they offered a, like a recycling for the for that stuff. Yeah. Recycling all of your plastic waste that you can that's not clinical. Mm. That would be a much 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 better option. It is what it is. If you've got a clinical waste company, maybe you should offer that as a service because I'd recycle. Yeah. I'll have to get. I might. I might get in touch with Initial. That's our people and see what they say. Like. Yeah, you can just ask if they'll do it. You know. So, um, is there any news? In the, any news for you this week? Uh, no, there's been no news for me. Quite honestly, I've had my head down, staring at my laptop, fixing broken websites and moving my, all of my websites from a server in America to a server in the Netherlands. Uh, I could explain it and get into it with you, but it depends how much you want me to talk about SQL databases and PHP, my yeah. admin, and FTP. No. And all of that. I don't think any of you would be at all interested in it. Needless to say, it's fucking boring. boring. On the other side of that, I've just I've just put my monthly newsletter together for my subscribers because tomorrow uh, it'll be out by the time you see this. Tomorrow will be Friday the thirteenth, so I've got a new song coming out tomorrow. So uh. if you're on my mailing list, which I, I you know is just I tell people about the 
you know, things like the guitars that I'm giving away, the jackets. This painting behind me, I'm giving away to my mailing list at some point, but you can only find out if about you're it, on if this you're mailing, on mailing list. list. I still need to make a mailing list. I will do it at some point. But I've just had the I've just had the guitar back. I'll put a, a shot of it up. So I'm this giving away a guitar. Good, to be honest. So Mike King at King Custom Paints has just painted the body for me. That this is the base. <gasps> is that the one that you showed me? That's the base coat. Leave a comment and let him know what you think. Engagement, see? Yeah, Engagement. I don't worry about Engagement. that sort of stuff. It's just, I just post pictures, I don't care. I've kept everybody informed as to what I'm doing, because obviously with the websites going down last month, I was... I bet um, that's a fucking ball like. It's it, it is. It's even more of a, a kick in a dick when you've you spent the first part of the first lockdown building a brand new website. It still has to finish mine, like. I ain't had time to start I it. Mine keeps breaking. So maybe I'm not the right person to maybe, ask about yeah, Maybe. So yes, I have... I don't know. I think it's a little rant. I... I I think it's a little rant, but like, if you don't know, you go on Instagram, check out Intense's Instagram page, and have a look for like a little picture of a chip. He knows what I'm on about now. Yeah. That picture I sent you. So basically, the current situation that we're in in the tattoo industry is we're in a position where our inks are going to get banned in Europe, and that's going to have a knock on effect to other countries as well. Because, you know, a massive portion of the market is no longer going to be viable for them to sell. Yep. So they're going to have to reformulate their colours and blah, blah, blah. We've gone into this in, in detail, right? One of the leading ink bottlers, and we've been trying to get, you know, Mario on the show as well. And they organise dates and then kind of at the last minute say, uh, give us a reason why they can't come on. I'm not sure, like, I'm at this point now where I'm like... Are they just kind of like saying they want to come on and then ducking out at the last minute? Are they just trying to keep us on that fucking, you know, just keeping us on the line? Like just, yeah, yeah. But either way, like I still love to have Mario on so I can ask him all these questions. But they put a post out and someone sent it to me and they basically come up with like this chip. It's a biochip. I sent it to Paul and what it does and what they say it does on their, on, on their Instagram account is like, oh, we come up with this innovative biochip, blah, blah, blah. And it, it tests how the ink will react to your customer's blood. And like common sense, Chris kind of looks at it and goes, well, that's just a fucking allergy test. It's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. So I, so I commented on it and I was just like, I was like, oh, hey guys, uh, you know, this is very abbreviated. If you want to see what exactly what I said, have a, have a look. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's something like along, along the lines of, is this just an allergy test or is this something that can be used to prove that the inks are safe? Therefore, like, you know, enabling it to be used as a way of reversing the ban of the inks. And they just basically turned and said, oh yeah, you know, it, it tests how the ink reacts into the body. So it tests for allergies kind of thing. Um, and then they started going off about like, you know, it's still a proprietary system and we can't give out too much information. But if you come to our tattoo conference, we'll be giving out more information. I'm just thinking, that's fucking shit because all you've done is posted up, right, that you've got this fucking innovative device. But if you want to see what it is, you got to pay to come to our fucking conference. And the reality is it's looking like it's just an allergy test, right? So to me, that shows that their interest isn't the safety and the protection of the industry. Their interest is the is just to fucking line their pockets, like to come up with another gimmick, right? That can make their money, but makes them look fucking cool. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. It looks like one of the big players, right? Kind of coming out and going, we're looking after the industry. We're taking care of the industry. We come up with this chip, which is an allergy test. So if your client wants to get tattooed, they can put the drop of their blood in it and fucking put some of the ink in it and see how the ink will react. But how much is it going to cost? Uh, the other thing is, like, you were you was explaining it to me yeah. uh, last night, weren't you? And I was like, I just don't see any of the clients doing that as an allergy. I don't, uh, people will be like, no, I don't. I mean, have you ever considered doing an allergy test for a tattoo? I've never done you it. Yeah, because they've, they've been quite light on the details of it, so... You know, like, oh, what's, this, what's this process going to be? Have we got to take blood, send it off to a lab, wait for the results to come back and then book the client Exactly. In? Or is it like, you know, the, the diabetic thing where you just, to get blood, you just prick your finger, squeeze it in, then you still have to send it off. Yeah, but realistically, it's going to have to be like that, the pinprick test, because, I mean, I don't know what tattoo is. There might be tattoos out there that know how to do it, but I don't know how to draw blood. 
But no, we, we couldn't. So, like, how much blood sugar? Do you know what I mean? Right? No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've no idea how to do it. You know. And this is the other thing as well, right? You know, this is, is this only, is this only something that Intense will offer, right? So, it's a case of, like, my client or one of my potential clients could turn around and go, oh, yes, I've just been online and I've just, just, I've just done this allergy test with a brand called Intense. And uh, I want you to use that ink. And I'm going to be like... Good luck because I don't use that brand of colour. So, well, see now, my other my other thought would be: imagine it's not a pinprick test and you've actually got to draw blood. Surely they'd that have to opens. Go to the doctors, it? Yeah, they'd have to. It can't be done by us. We're not fucking qualified. Yeah. If you do start doing that and having syringes and injecting people, like, don't you open yourself up to all kinds of other fucking lawsuit problems and issues? Like, you, Travis Barker, yeah. had an injection. Do you remember? He had an injection. He got sick somewhere like South America, went to a like a, an A and E to to get treatments. They treated him, but there was some contamination somewhere in it on, on the needle and it's left him with a permanent nerve damage in one of his arms or something like that. So he's, he's Oh, not... that's why you got the nerve damage, is it? Yeah, it's, that was from being treated for, for something while he was on tour in South America and it was the actual process of the in, injecting or whatever and so now he's got this nerve damage. Imagine if you do an allergy test and, you know, it's only the third time you've ever took blood and you fuck somebody up like that, they're, like, they're going to sue you. So I would have thought it just opens us up to even more problems if you're drawing blood, like, you know. It, yeah, well, yeah, possibly. I, I just honestly think, right, that it's... I, I just think, like, as companies, as an ink brand, they've known about this problem with inks and they've known about it for fucking years. I heard about it over 10 years. I've been talking for 15 years now. I worked it out. And around 10, over 10 years ago, right, I heard people talking about inks getting banned. And I heard that Intense was one of the companies that was pioneering the fight. And in 10 years, right, fuck all has happened. In 10 years, we're now at a point, right, where our inks are getting banned. And people are being asked. We are being asked, right? Consumers are being asked to protect and try and save it, right? So then the fucking mad thing is, right, that all that's happening and all the work they should have been doing to prove that the ink is safe, instead of doing it, what have they gone and done? They've just gone, we've got a biochip that will tell if you're allergic to our colours. And it's like, yeah. but it's like I said what's to the you point? Yesterday. What's no. the point? Hang on, we know, but this is the thing. Like, what's the fucking point in having an allergy test, right, when fucking the entirety of Europe can't even use your fucking colours. No, well, I mean, the thing is, like I said to you last night, that's, that may have been in development for two or three years and the timing it, it has of been, it is just incredibly unfortunate, you know it, what I mean? It's not even that, yeah, no, but, yeah, but I guarantee you, right, that they knew the ink ban was coming before they started working on this shit. Because yeah, but it's for, been for in the works for know, over 10 years. Yeah, but for all you know, all, all of that is already taken care of and there are people waiting in the wings for that to happen to make their announcement oh, of, you know, I, 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 reckon I, it, I guarantee there's somebody somewhere working on something. It, well, we had this discussion before, and it? it's like, it has been done. There have been inks made, right, that would not have been affected by the European ban and that was the colour of yeah, Cheyenne. Solid ink like, would, wouldn't have been. It's just a shame that it wasn't really good ink, but like with a with a little bit of work that possibly could have been turned into a good ink, you know. It's fucking hell, it's not like you saying something like that, Shane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Normally you're fucking like ripping into them. Yeah, I know, I do get a, a bit of that, and you know. That, it's always I'm, fucking... Uh, do you know why though, in, in all honesty, it's not that like I don't, I don't like Cheyenne I, um, or, or anything like that. In recent years, in, in all seriousness now, I, my, my thing with the, the Cheyenne products that have come out recently is just I'm massively frustrated with them because I expect better of that company. I've had all the Cheyenne machines up till now. I expect them to do better than, than what they're doing at the moment. Their current power supply, the little one, makes no sense. The machine makes no sense. And this is the same company that brought us the Spirit, the Thunder, the Spirit 2 or Pro, or the, the Thunder 2 or Thunder Pro, because uh, I'm, I'm, I refuse to use, Trademark. you know, Latin, Latin names for a, for that. Port, no, port, Porto Latin, Porto Latin, Portuguese. Latin, yeah, some Latin, the Portuguese Latin. 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 It makes no sense. Their naming conventions are a mess, uh, which is why I get frustrated with them because I'm like, you're supposed to know more better than this. You're supposed to be better than this. I'm supposed to be able to look at it and go, 
I mean, we talked about this when we were talking before the machines were, comp- were out. And I said to you in one of the really early podcasts, Cheyenne are the people that will smash it, they'll nail it. And actually, when I saw it, I was bitterly disappointed that it was just so, yeah. you know, mm. what, what happens, you know. And so it's not that I don't like so their I'll, products, it's so quite I'll, the contrary, I love their products, but I don't love what they're doing right now. I just think there's something going horribly wrong with them. And I worry about them because I like their brand and, you know, and I want to I use, use their stuff, but it's... You know. If they fail as a machine manufacturer, they'll succeed as a needle brand, 100%. Like, their needles are just, like, the best. Don't agree. It's okay. It's right to be wrong. Don't agree strongly <laughs> with that. You know, I know that there are... Well, well our chances... Are so, do you, so, do, do you reckon our chances are completely blown now of getting Cheyenne to sponsor the channel? No, I think they, they, they might still do it, you know. I mean, I think they... You know, when we've spoke to them, they know that, you know... You'd have to send them a nice letter then. Giving them loads of information out to fix their the bad design decisions that they've made you know and they <laughs> desperately they desperately need somebody to run their marketing department for them so you know hit me up make me an offer i'll, I'll sort it out for you <laughs> right i ain't cheap though i do get down on cheyenne but for me that's a bit like it's a bit like gibson guitars yeah you know they they went out of they went out of business in 2015 and i've you know i've played gibson's on and off ever since i was a kid right and you, like when a when a brand is so good and they make iconic things, like I genuinely yeah. think that the Spirit and the Thunder are, are game oh, changing machines. tattoo machines. They're iconic, but I don't think they've made anything iconic since then because I think they've lost their way and they desperately need yeah. a proper marketing team. And that marketing team needs to actually communicate with the production department and the design department because you can see it like communications breaking down somewhere yeah you know how the fuck do you end up like a german company based in berlin with an with a native american name two three of your machines are named after native american things and then suddenly out of the blue you end up with fucking latin and portuguese for for the next two machines which in all in any other world would have been called the, the spirit two and the thunder two yeah it makes fucking no sense it's stupid Fully stupid. <laughs> if I could say that in you're fucking go German, I would. You know, it, no, you're go off it's that. because I expect better <laughs> from them because they should be a better company. I worked in marketing. I won design awards as a marketer. Partners. I worked with massive companies, companies much, much bigger than fucking Cheyenne all the time. And, and so I know how this world works and I can see what's going wrong at their company. I just don't know who's dropping a fucking ball. I think... The thing is, I don't want them to go out of business because I've spent... 10 years using their tattoo machines, you know. I still use a Cheyenne Spirit, still use I one. Think, I think as well, like, with, with, in the tattoo industry, a lot of these companies have marketing companies doing their stuff for them, but they're not actually marketing companies, they're just people that have blagged, blagged it, like, because they... That's what I was And I've learned that, for, yeah. yeah. Since doing this, I've, I've actually learned how many of these companies the marketing departments, some are really good and you know that they know their shit when it comes to marketing and they do a really good job. Others are just doing a terrible job. I can honestly say, having done this for a living, I have never had a conversation with anybody who works in marketing for the tattoo industry who's got the first fucking clue about what marketing is. Simple as that. Like, for instance, we were talking about that cable a couple of weeks ago, right? That anybody that works in real marketing knows that you cannot market anything unless you know the market. That's why you do market research yeah. first. Any amount of market research would have told Mo- Muzo Toku the cable already exists. Everything you've done was done 10 years ago. So that person who works in their marketing department hasn't done even the basics. They haven't just done a quick five minute Google. They're not marketeers. They're fucking idiots. This is the, no, but this is the thing though. This is, this is, this is the industry in itself. It's, Oh, well, someone's made something, let's make something yeah. exactly the same and charge more money for it. That's what people do. So no, I'm not down on Cheyenne. I just, I, I, I expect better from them. And I'm looking at you right now, Cheyenne. I expect better. You disappoint me. They should be leading the way as a manufacturer, not following. That's what they should be doing. They should be leading the way. So before we move on, I, I look, so uh, somebody called Abraham actually commented on the watch just before you buy the Solnover Unlimited video. And this, actually proves my point as to why they should have had a detachable or proprietary battery system similar to the FKINs and similar to the Stigma Force. 
So someone said, uh, Abraham said, I loved mine until it just died one month after the 12 months warranty. Cheyenne told me they cannot repair the Sonova Unlimited. He's abbreviated it to SNU. And I read this when I was half asleep. And I'm like, what the fuck is SNU? <laughs> I was like, and I was like, oh, after coffee, I was like, oh, Sonova Unlimited. So he said they can't repair it, but they can only replace it for an additional $460. I have a $200 wireless machine from Amazon that lasted longer than my snoo and a uh, terrible service to deal with as well. Obviously, everybody has different experiences with service. I can't attest to that. When I've had problems with my Cheyenne machines in the past, service has been great. I've had them repaired straight away and that is before the show. So, so comments. your comments. comments. I'm going oh yeah. to read the I'm gonna comments. I'm going to focus on ba, 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 the ba, 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 questions ba, 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 I've had for the uh, <laughs> the power supply episode is the one I'm going to do. You know, I have the power. So I'm going to read one. Oh, Chris- speaking of having the power, have you watched the new He-Man that's on Netflix? No, why would I do that? Oh, fine then. Don't fucking watch it. No, I don't like it. Kevin Smith has remade it. Oh, I like I, I have the I power. I like Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith's all right. But no, I'm not. A, I don't. No, they didn't do it for me, all that sort of stuff. You know, it's like the Thundercats and the, the what were them, the biker mice from Mars. Awesome, awesome. What was the shark one? There was yeah, a you shark were prob- cartoon. You were probably watching some, like, fucking random fucking documentary about the Berlin Wall or something when you were, like, a fucking kid. I was either watching that or reruns <laughs> Runs of Beavis. Everyone was like, have you watched, have, have you watched Thundercats? And he's like, no, I've watched a lengthy documentary about the Berlin Wall. I was actually... Watching when the documentary. And, and when they're going to bring it down. Watching the documentary about a bloke who was messed around so much by his town council that he converted, and this happened in 2004, he converted a bulldozer to a tank and did $7 million worth of damage to the town that fucked him over. I think I seen yeah. that. Yeah. Don't fuck with the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, especially somebody who's got those skills, like a specific set of skills. Yeah, a specific set of skills. Well, this was welding and shooting, mostly, not uh, anything else. Yeah. So Tom P asked a question on the power supply uh, episode. Something Tom. Uh, something Tom. He, uh, and it's actually just about clip cords. He said, can I ask, will the length of the clip cord affect the performance of the machine? I'm looking at buying one from Paul. Thank you. And not sure what I think it will. to purchase many things. Um, no. If it's too small? No, it won't. Uh, well, if it's too small, though. No, it, if it's... Think about no, it. No, no. If, like, if it's so small that it's like... If it's like this long, then you're not going to be able to tattle it because it's going to be stuck. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really fucking with see it. What I'm, see what I'm dealing with. You know, see what I'm dealing with. I, yeah, I try to be professional. <laughs> I, try to, I try, try to bring a sense of sense of order. All I get, fucking Muppet Show over here. I mean, what, what do you want me to do? What do you, I mean, he loves it really. No, uh, the length of the clip cords it will affect the the power, but you'd have to be, I think, over about fifty feet. Then, then you'd. Oh, don't ask me. I'm fucking. Power. I don't make cables. No, at about. Fi- <laughs> uh, I'm only. I'm only looking. You look at me. It's like he looks at me. He's like. So I'm, he's like, I'm like I just thought you might want to. I thought you might want to say something. You've wanted to say enough up to this point, but you've bailed now that it's got technical. I notice. All right. Okay. Hang on. Then. Hang on. Yeah. Over fifty. You. Yeah. You. So you know it's a drop in power. If it's if it's over fifty feet, you'll probably also know it's a drop in power depending on the quality of the cable as well. Am I right? Yeah, you will, definitely. I mean, a good quality cable. What about know. the connectors? Yeah, connectors. You've got poor, you know, quali- poor quality is connectors. So that, is that okay? A lot of the, the, the cheaper cables, um, which are actually not cheaper, they're just more cheaply made, they use a press fit, so they're just pressed into the fitting rather than soldered on, which is not ideal. It's a much cheaper way of making the cables because it's, it's basically like the fitting just crimps down into the cable and you just it, it can be automated, right? Whereas soldering is pretty manual, right? So, um, yes, the quality of the connection can make a, a huge difference. It, unlike audio, where it, it, it is more noticeable because sig- audio signal will deteriorate over over further, you know, over cable runs, long cable runs, more noticeably mm. than power. Over 50 feet, you might do that, but like, man, if you if you need a clip cord that's 50 feet long, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm like, you, <laughs> Yeah, you, you'd have to like phone somebody, it's like, oh, excuse me, excuse me, can you uh, do a favor? Can you just 
put it up to 7.1 volts, please. Exactly. So, no, I think I've said you can, if you go on to evolutioncords.com, which is currently not working because it's moving server, but by the time you see this, it probably will be working. So, you don't want to go on there, you want to go on to the go to, Toku yeah, website instead. Yeah, I'll put, a, <laughs> I'll put a, yeah, go there and you can, you can spend three times as much. I'll put a link in the description to where you can get it. You can order custom length cable, custom collar, custom bend angle. Uh, all that sort of stuff. It's all on there. So you, you can have it that however really you want. Cool. You, you can actually have your name written on the cables as well now. Do you know what you, do you, know, do you, know what you could do, right? You could do an advert, but uh, three for the price of one. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, don't worry about it, Tom. Speaking of power supplies, there was another comment on there from Garcia, and they said, I've honestly never thought about the amps. Are you saying that the motor will have more torque at a higher amp without increasing the needle speed? Now... This is an interesting question. I spoke to... Simple answer is, in my opinion, yes. Yeah, it feels like it, but the, it's basically there's a lot more factors involved, isn't it? It's like, because I wanted to double check, you know, to make sure we give out, you know, we, we talk about certain people's products, wanted to double check. So I spoke to Chris from Cheyenne. Who put the Nutella in the I asked him why. I said, like, you know, is there a reason why, you know, your machines feel like they run differently on a critical atom in comparison to a PU4? Uh, and he said the reason why machines run differently on different power units from other brands is that the amps of their power plugs are different. Now, from my understanding, I also spoke to Gaston as well from FKINs, um, and he explained that uh, there's a couple of different kind of variants. It's like, so number one, not all power supplies provide the same amount, same type of power, isn't it? So you've got like, well, what he said was you've got pulse with modulation and then other ones provide direct current. So that's AC, alternating current and direct current. Ones that provide the direct current are the ones that are better. So if you potentially plug your machine into a power supply that's providing a pulse with modulation power source, yep. you're going to you're gonna notice a different in, difference in noise and the way your machine performs. The other thing that I've discovered is if, say for example, your motor is designed to draw up to one amp and it runs optimum having that one amp, if the power unit is only supplying like 0.75 amps, so like, or, or let's just say, for example, the Cheyenne machine is, is designed to run. It can, it can draw one amp, but it's designed to run with a power supply that provides like 0 0.85 amps. Then having that full amp is going to make it more punchier. And then if you've got a machine then that is designed to run at one amp and you use it on a power supply that's not providing adequate power, it's going to run differently again. So there's like... There's loads. Even the RCA cable, like we just said now, it's like the RCA cable will affect it. Like you could literally you get a Cheyenne machine, use it with like one type of cable, then use it with an Evo cable, then use it with a Cheyenne cable. And the chances are it, it could run differently just by the different connectors and the different cables that I use. Am I right? I think you said to me before, it's like the silver, remember, I'm sure you said this to me, the silver RCA connectors, like these bits like the gold ones and the silver ones you said like there's a difference between them there's a difference in the amount of um it's like uh conductivity yeah. basically it's the metal is some metals are more conductive because obviously every time you connect something up to that each one of those plugs has got to make a good yeah. solid connection so it can be as simple as having a bad connection on your machine as well like the machine can have a bad connection on it it can be a crappy bit of soldering right and then so um all the way along that chain there's there's a lot of variables. variables. When we did the power supply episode, I, you know, I kind of laid out, realistically, I'm talking to you not as an electronics genius, because I'm not, I'm talking to you as a tattooist. Yeah. And all I can tell you is, in my hand, I feel, like Pig on the Basement, for instance, said, I do find my Hawk spirit works better for me on a critical atom. Um, I find exactly the same. Yeah. That the, the spirit works better not on the you think power supply. It works better, it works more like what you're used to. Do you know I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, if the, if the motor is designed to draw one amp, right, it won't blow up no. if it's 1.1 amps, right? Because the motor will have tolerances. So that but motor in the same will, respect will probably as, yeah. take the same voltage at five amps. So even though the nominal draw from that motor is one amp, if you supply it with, with more, then it, you will notice a difference, right? I totally agree. One thing they did say, though, so one thing they did explain to me um, was that 
if you are, like, say, for example, having a motor that is having that overconsumption, what they explained was, like, uh, basically, over overconsumption of amps is likely due to a faulty motor, um, and the amount of amps supplied shouldn't affect it. So if you're supplying, like, Less is only you know what I mean. It's, it'll, it should only affect it if you're not providing enough amps. But it, essentially, if you've got a power supply that provides five amps, and the machine is only drawing one amp, and the motor is designed to run at one amp, no matter what power supply you use it on, there shouldn't really be much difference unless the motor is designed by that company to run at you know zero point uh, zero eight zero point eight five amps. But yeah, it's in interesting, you know, they, they, both companies also said that their power supplies have got safety features in, in there, which is an over... Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so they, yeah, so, yeah, so if, the, if the motor goes faulty and starts drawing more and more power, the, the, yeah, the power supply recognises it, yeah. Buy a good quality power supply, plug it in, you'll be fine. Just, just buy a good quality one, don't buy a bootleg one, get a good quality one from a reputable supplier, and you, you, you job done. Good, good piece of cable, and away you go. By uh, you, you should we should get an, uh, by uh, have an Evo Cable <laughs> affiliate link. Yeah, we should. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll do um, I'll do a discount code once I got the website back up and running. I'll do a discount code for uh, that tattoo show viewers. Um, while I think about it, I've got another comment here about power supplies. Hackademus. Um, that's definitely wrong, but like when you've just given me a random set of letters, I've no idea, mate. So I'm going, Hakadimus said, Hi guys, my Mozu Toku came with 19 volt 2.1 amp output power adapter. Uh, doesn't say 5 amps on it. Only place where I can see 5 amp output is on the power supply itself. But will it give 5 amps on the output when it's connected to a 2.1 amp power adapter? No, it will put out 2.1 amps because the actual box itself is only going to put out the ampage that's put into it. The Mozu to Muzo Toku can obviously take uh, up to 5 amps on the input and they obviously they provide it with a 2.1 amp uh, supply. There you go. A couple of short comments here. Uh, I've got Terra. a long comment which is for you. You can do that afterwards then. T uh, Terra said, oh my God, thank you guys for picking me as a winner. I wouldn't mind pa ta paying taxes for the import to Austria. How can I contact you? Well, you can contact us, uh, that's at show at gmail.com, but don't worry, I've, it's already on its way to you. So uh, I've taken care of it. And again, Tom P uh, said, went and picked up the goodie bag today. And man, Paul is a top class guy. Uh, was an honour to meet and have a chat with him. Awesome studio. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. You know, it was a good chat, man. There you go. Uh, and he's a lovely guy. He works um, in the studio in Birmingham, you know, uh, which is like nice, 10 miles, nice. 10 miles from, me, from where I am. So I've got a comment here. Um, Alink uh, Kutashi. I'm sorry if I'm saying that completely wrong. So this is on the 12 Brother PJ Printer Tips. It says, hi, I'm from Indonesia. Thanks for sharing this video with us. I bought the PJ663 and only working on my PC and MacBook. And this model not compatible with my iPad Pro. So what I want to asking, what model recommended for my iPad for easy to connect and easy to use for my Procreate? 773 or 763MFI? Thanks for your comment. What you need to do is uh, you need to buy the 763MFI. MFI stands for Made for iOS. Ooh! So that's the, that's the one that you need. That's the one that will Bluetooth to your iPad. The 663, which is the model before, the problem is that the Bluetooth is, is newer now. So old Bluetooth things don't connect to new Bluetooth things. So that's why it's had to be updated. So the 763 MFI will work with your iPad, but it will also work with your laptop and your PC and all that sort of stuff, because it's got USB as well, and you can Bluetooth into it from your computer as well. So yeah, 763 MFI. Oh yeah, I've got one other thing that I need to uh, tell everybody about just before we go. This is a cautionary tale for you kids out there. Oh, uh, is this what you told me the other day? Yes. I recently, the chair that I'm sitting on, I recently upgraded it to these uh, wheels. You know, these like skateboardy sort of rollerblade wheels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They're very good. 
right? <laughs> That's, and they're a bit too good. There, there's very little friction. You, you will feel like you're on an ice rink when you first get it, and that does come with a bit of a learning curve. I've never fell off a tattoo stool yeah. in 10 years <laughs> or more of tattooing. I've also sat on top of my pelly case and all kinds of you know, weird perches at conventions, and I've never fell. Since I upgraded my wheels, I've fallen off my chair twice. How do you manage that? The second one was, I leant back on my chair like that and the, the wheel must have just been perfect and it just shot out, the whole thing shot out from underneath me across the room. I booted the bed halfway into the, the room. Fortunately, I wasn't tattooing and I hit, <laughs> hit the floor and my, my client Dale, who was here actually getting tattooed by Beth, he came over and went, can I help you up, Paul? And I just went, to be honest with you, Dale, I'm just gonna stay here for a minute because I landed on my tailbone oh, so hard hell. that I was sort of like, fuck. Now, so I can't show you the, the injury because I didn't even know this was possible to bruise your own asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> this has been That Tattoo Show. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever it is. I've been Paul. On a Monday. I've been Chris. <laughs> Don't forget... There's a, a brand new graphic on screen right now. Uh, click on it, click on it. If you didn't click on it earlier, click on it now. While you're doing that, don't forget, tell all your friends, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your lawyer, tell your priest. And whatever you do, don't ask old Tom what time it is because you know what happens then, don't you? This has been That Tattoo Show and we'll see you next week. Take care, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>